Okay, I'm joined today live in the limelight Belfast by Mr. Frank Fontasier. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good, good. It's Fonsere, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so there, we're off to a great start now. A good start. That's the old uh, Irish <laughs> accent coming in. How did you get on in Dublin last night? Did you enjoy it? Oh, it was fantastic, yeah. Um, it was a new venue we've never played before, um, but uh, it was sold out. The crowd was just, you know, crazy the entire time. They, they... Uh, probably sang the entire Judas song by themselves before we even hit the stage. So, yeah, it was amazing. We always have great shows in Ireland. Yeah. I've noticed that the progression of the band from you guys have been coming to Ireland for years mm -hmm. and the venues just keep getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And I've noticed as well that you guys are always playing festivals as well. And I see the fuzzy name is just rising up the bill all the time. How does that make you feel? It's great, especially, you know, for as long as the band has been together to be continuously, even though it's been a, a slow progression, it's been a progression steadily upward, um, which is, you know, really amazing. And it's really a blessing to be uh, as far along as we are and still climbing to still be like kind of a new emerging band after as long as we've been doing it. So, yeah, as long as as long as we keep, you know, getting better and, and doing better shows and and you know bringing more people on board all the better yeah um you guys have obviously had a kind of a tough year with your tours being rescheduled and mm -hmm. stuff like that but you've got to do a hell of a lot of shows like this the last couple of months do you want to tell us about them well um we got to do about three weeks uh in september in the states and then we um we did uh, the cruise, Chris's cruise, and now we're over here for two weeks, and uh, that'll be it for the year. But then we've got the cruise coming up again in March, and we've got a, a pretty extensive tour of the U.S. plan. So, um, yeah, so it was uh, 2020 was a really rough year for everybody, you know, all the way around. Um, you know, to sit at home when you're supposed to be touring is is tough, but. Um, you know, you just, you get through it and you just try to soldier on. And that's what we've tried to do. Was that the longest break that you've ever had from playing? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't, uh, we did one short run in the, in September of 2020, for like four shows and, um, you know, caught a lot of grief for it. Yeah. And, uh, and that was all in 2020. We just did, that's all we did. Except for we did, the cruise was at the beginning of, uh, at the beginning of January before all this you know, made the news. So we basically did the cruise and then we did four shows in September and that was it. That's the, by far the longest period of time off that we've ever had. Yeah. Is there anywhere in the world that you haven't played with Fozzie that you would like to play? Oh yeah. We've never played in Japan. We've, we've been wanting to play Japan for a long time. Um, South America, um, you know, basically any place we haven't been, we've, you know, we've toured all over the U S of course and Canada and we've been to uh, Europe and the UK a bunch. And, um, uh, we've been to australia several times and uh and basically everywhere else in the world that we haven't been other than there we'd like to go yeah um in terms of the band and themselves fozzy um you've evolved over time with with different styles of uh songs mm -hmm. but you still haven't lost your true identity like you still know fozzy when you hear them, you still know that that is a fuzzy sound, but some of the songs maybe sound different to compare to before. Like when I was talking to Billy, he said that these days people want hooks and that's mm. what it's all about. And I noticed yeah. that you're got all your songs. there are very, very catchy. Is there anything you're doing differently in making your songs? Well, um, I think we're just, we're trying to write less, um, to not to put it the wrong way, I guess, but not to try to impress the musicians out there, but to, mm. you know, write songs that people can relate to and write songs that people can move to and just, you know, um, that have hooks and that are, you know, have a, you know, a wider appeal. It's, it's not necessarily an, uh, 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 an attempt to get more radio play or anything. Mm. We just, you know, want to write as relatable material as we can, you know, and just relate to as, as, uh, as large a group of people as we can. And, um, you know, it's, I've all, it, I've always enjoyed just good, you know, heavy rock songs with good hooks, you know, mm -hmm. and to me, whether a song is, uh, uh, whether a song can make it on the radio or not, doesn't matter to me as much as I just think it's a good song. If it's a good song, yeah, let's do it, you know, and, um, you know, as much as I love like, you know, kind of technical metal and we kind of experimented with being more technical um, on, 
our chasing the grail album 10 years ago and that was all great but i mean i just i i tend to like things a little simpler and just straightforward and and just stuff you can enjoy you know and that's you know that's heavy and got attitude um but that you know that people can enjoy i think like the days of having a lot of solos and drum solos and guitar solos in songs is kind of doesn't really happen as much these days anymore do you think yeah i don't know many songs that have drum solos in them um and which is fine with me i'm not i don't consider myself a soloist I, uh, the idea of doing a drum solo is actually kind of alien to me i like mm -hmm. you know i like being the the foundation that everybody else you know sits on i like i like doing that um to me there's nothing better than like putting down the groove or the pocket you know uh so you know being like a uh, a super technical player has never been, you know, really a goal for me. And I mean, I like a good guitar solo if it means something in the song, mm -hmm. but you can tell when, when it's just kind of like, look how well I can play, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's all about the song. That's, that's the, you know, it's just like a writer is all about the story. Yeah. The band is all about the song. In terms of your setup, then your personal setup with your kit and stuff, we were having a look at it last night. It's a lot different than what we've seen before with the symbols and stuff. Do you want to tell us about them? Yeah, we um, we started using uh, an electronic kit. Uh, Rich and myself have a, a band called Guardians of the Jukebox that we do, which is like a tribute to the MTV era of, uh, of the 80s. And um, we had this electronic kit that we used uh, to record the last couple of albums that we started using live for that band. And then um, one time we actually did, uh, Chris had uh, his birthday party at his house where Fozzie played and the Guardians <laughs> played. And just to make things simple, we just used that electronic kit for the whole thing. And, and once it was done, our uh, front of house guy and Rich were both like, oh my God, we're using electronic drums from now on because it's just, just so much easier to mix and, and make sound good. And and it, it's taken a little getting used to for me and I still love acoustic drums, but um, you know, in the overall scheme of things, um, the technology they're using with, uh, with their Kempers and we don't have a lot of stage volume anymore. So it doesn't really make sense to have you know, quiet guitars on stage and quiet bass and everything, and then have this enormous, you know, this huge loud acoustic drum kit. It's just easier to make sound good with the electronic drums. And everybody's been, you know, kind of freaked out about it. Like, why are you mm. doing that? But then when they hear it, they're like, oh, okay, I see why you're doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause some people are asking me, oh, will you ask Frank about why he's using an electronic kit? But you're just after saying basically down to logistics and it just, it works for you guys as well yeah and it's different you know people you know people see it and they're just like you know they're like wow he's using all electronic that's that's yeah. interesting and i've gotten a lot of people asking me about it and it's you know generated a lot of interest in people they're like hey you know maybe this is something to look into so you know it's kind of fun to be uh you know hopefully maybe out front of something you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what's your favorite songs to play live now at the moment well, Judas is always fun because everybody, you know, reacts so amazingly to that song. Mm -hmm. And uh, the new single, Sane, is a lot of fun to play. Um, you know, people are really reacting to that song as well. And it's fun to open uh, open the set with, like, your current single, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, a lot of people don't do that. Uh, when we released Judas and it was doing really, really well, um, we would open the set with that, which was, like, almost unheard of. Who does mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know? And... Um, so those are those are a lot of fun to play and uh stuff from the last album burn me out i, I love playing that song and uh the new songs uh purifier and and uh, the vulture club are a lot of fun to play too so but they're all fun to play when could we expect a new album hopefully april i, I think that's what i've been hearing i i can't you know don't quote me on that yeah. i don't know um but that's the that's the word i've been hearing is around april yeah and obviously i know you're only here in ireland and the uk at the moment but is it going to be another three years before you guys are back do you think well i mean that's all going to depend on you know the crazy stuff that's going on right now i mean if if uh if things don't get locked down and we can't come we will but you know i mean we uh it's all going to depend on what we're allowed to do yeah uh talk to me about that video just shortly just for a minute of uh saying and you guys recorded that on a roller coaster and yeah. threw the guitar off it like what was that like and how many times did you actually have to record that 
Uh, I was really looking forward to it because when I was a kid, I, I loved amusement parks and roller coasters and all that. And, um, and I hadn't been on a roller coaster in a long time. So I was looking forward to it. I was thinking it was going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, PJ, our bass player had never been on a roller coaster in his life. <laughs> right. So we ended up doing it six times and it was all we could take because the first trip through was just a, like a practice run actually. So we, I think we ended up doing it more than six times. Um, but as soon as we did it, I was just like, oh, my God, this is not like what I remember. <laughs> um, it was really, really it, it was a rough ride. It was really intense. And um, to do it, you know, just over and over again, it, it was it was it was hard. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. And, uh, you know, Chris, the, his ability to perform under those circumstances, because I was sitting in the back, all I had to do was just hang on. You know, yeah. I didn't have to do anything, but he had to, you know, perform the song as we're going through all that. And I was just like, man, I don't know that I could do it, you know, the, what he's doing. And so him, you know, he's always a very, you know, driven, very driven person. Yeah. And so that inspired me to just like to not complain and just put my head down and get through it. And after I think the sixth run, he looked back and said, I'm done. That's it. <laughs> I was like, thank God. <laughs> Cause it was, uh, I mean, you, you think, you know, it's like, Oh, it's riding a roller coaster. People do that for fun. And it's like, but it was, it was intense. That was an intense roller coaster. It's one of the, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, rated really highly amongst enthusiasts as a, as a really intense ride. So it, it took me by surprise. I wasn't ready for it. Obviously, the show was really, really good last night. We were enjoying it. But the last time you guys played in Ireland, we were in the Tivoli Theatre. That, okay. that has since been demolished. It's another venue that we've lost. Oh, okay. And yeah. that night, we got an old SOS chant going, if you remember. <laughs> yeah. And we're going we're gonna to try and start one tonight. What are the chances of us getting SOS if it's loud enough tonight? Uh, probably pretty slim because we haven't played that song in a little while. We haven't rehearsed it. I don't think we've ever played it with PJ, so I don't think he even knows it. You know, PJ's uh, the bass player is is new to the band, so yeah. he'd probably be like, "I don't even know the song." So <laughs> chances are kind of slim that that's that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. And you guys are throwing in a few covers now in into your set as well. What's the idea behind that? It's just have have a bit of fun. Have a bit of fun. Yeah, exactly. That's what a that's what a rock show should be. It's yeah. fun. And um, you know, we've just we started out a, a while back. We were playing TNT. Yeah. And then um, Chris wanted to change it up and play Dirty Deeds. And that song has gone over so well at the end of the set that, I mean, you know, that might just end up being what ends our set from now on. You yeah. know, who knows? I think it kind of surprises some people as well. That yeah, know. it's 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 just fun. You know, like people want, you know, when people come to a show, they want to have a good time and we want to give them a good time. And, you know, if it involves throwing a ACDC cover in the set, then so be it. You know, that's great. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. You're the, the third member of Fuzzy we've had on the show, and we're going to work towards getting Rich and Chris on the show in the future because we had PJ on there a while ago. I got to know okay. him a little bit. Actually, myself and PJ were upstairs last night. Um, okay. They told me the smoking area was upstairs. All right. And they sent me upstairs. And then the guy goes, have you got a wristband? And I said, no. And he said to PJ, have you got a wristband? And he said, no. Guys, you're going to have to get out of here. <laughs> I'm in the band. I'm the, in the band. PJ just said, no. Yeah. yeah, I hate yeah. those wristbands. Yeah. Anyway. Frank, thanks a million for your time, man. Absolutely. My pleasure. Great to see you.